calm down cause he just wanna learn son so I teach him son I am the one that teach Call me 10, 10 wins and 20 Right Patricia, so how did you meet Antonio at the airport? How did it go? Well, I got off the plane, I had two huge suitcases and I walked off the plane looking for Antonio. I wasn't sure how the airport worked in Stockport in the UK so I wasn't sure where to go. Should I go outside and meet him? And then from behind me, I heard my name called and there he was, the big bouquet of flowers. Aww. And I think I screamed and dropped what I was carrying and yeah. Aww. And what did he say? What did he say to you? I don't really remember. There wasn't much talking. There wasn't much time? There wasn't much talking. I oh, wasn't much it talking. Was... It was straight to snogging. Yeah. Really yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's really romantic. Yeah. No, sometimes there's no need for words. Sometimes. It was, it was a big hug. It was I had a big hug on Facebook. What was that, Patricia? I just said it was a big hug. Big because hug. Because we've been talking on Skype, doing things together on YouTube for a long time since maybe late January, or late January, February. Um, so, no kinky stuff, no sexy stuff, no, just flat earthy stuff. Yeah. So, you ha so what happened after you met him at the airport then? Where, what did you go from there? Did you get a taxi home or what did you do? He had his car there, which is a beautiful 70s oh. vintage car, and I don't know the brand. It's that's the Esco Mac 3 SL, classic. Yeah, it's a orange, red, blue with white stripes on it. And we went to a grocery store to get fruit and a few items of food. And some people in the store in the parking garage complimented the car and they were very smiling. The car was making people happy to see it. Cool. And I was happy to be here and with these nice flowers and Antonio and just excited to just for everything because of life. Very good. Cool. Yeah, very cool. Face. Oh. The funny thing was, when I met his sisters, when we had a moment alone, two of the sisters who lived in the same house, they didn't even know I existed. Now, at this point, he'd already asked me to marry him, but we weren't sure how that would all happen, and we were going to hammer out that situation while I was there for that week. Anyway. I'm getting ahead of myself. So, then we had sex. Yeah, pretty much. Airport, car, grocery store, home. We made tea or coffee. We didn't really drink it. And then we went and had sex. That's what normal people would do, right? Especially people in love. Now, I had told him when we were on Skype calls before we had met that I'm postmenopausal. Hopefully this isn't too much for anyone's ears here which means I've been through menopause. I've had hot flashes and my period dwindled away to nothing. And due to that, there's a thing called uh, vaginal lining atrophy, which just means you're kind of dry. You can use lube and gentleness and you're cool. You're good to go. Now, some people take uh, hormones, but I didn't want to take hormones going through menopause. There are natural things too to do. I didn't even do those. I just went through it. I don't know if it's my diet or my genetics. Menopause for me wasn't bad. One hot flash each night at 10 o'clock for some real weird reason. And that was it. But down there, during sexual intercourse, you'd need lube and gentleness at first until you, you got in there. And my being clear. Thank you. Do you think I like doing this? <laughs> I have to do this. I brought lube with me because I didn't know in that country where we'd go and it would be embarrassing to ask him to, hey, uh, can we just go buy lube? I mean, it just seems ridiculous. So I brought it with me. I put it in the bedroom by the little nightstand thing he had and, and we used that. And he was gentle. He was fine. And he assured me that as time went on with our lovemaking, it would be better and better and better because I hadn't been with somebody for quite some time. 
because I'm, you wouldn't know it by this relationship, but I'm really selective with who I sleep with. There's not a long list. So that's what happens. There was no sexy time, like he said. Because he started doing weird stuff, like saying sexy time and then going and doing a hangout until five in the morning and falling asleep on the sofa because I went to bed expecting him at any moment, you know, fully showered and lotioned and shaved and smelling like a garden, waiting, waiting. And we'd had a lot of sex already, but something happened. Something started to happen. He'd fall asleep listening to ASMR, Lord of the Rings. And I didn't know that, but because I'd fall asleep while I was hearing him do a YouTube video on his channel. I had the door halfway closed so the cats could go out to the litter box or sleep with me. And I'd fall asleep and I'd wake up and I'd hear just this crazy ASMR voice of a woman saying Lord of the Rings dialogue. And it was creepy. The first time I heard it, I didn't even know about ASMR then. I snuck out into the living room and saw him on the sofa and heard this weird ASMR voice and didn't understand ASMR and thought, is this like porn? Yeah, okay, uh, I was clueless. Is this some weird creepy sexual thing? It, it, what? But I guess it isn't. So I go back to bed and think, well, you know, tomorrow. <laughs> and then tomorrow he would be fully ready, capable, sexual, and everything. Everything was fine. And we started making progress with the uh, postmenopausal vaginal dryness because if you, if you don't use it, you lose it when it comes to an older woman and sexuality. Not every woman, but women don't lubricate as much after menopause and the vaginal walls get thinner and it creates pain. So he knew this, of course he did, because he would take his time. Still fun, it wasn't like he was walking on eggshells, nothing like that. And fun isn't really the word, I use that word right now, I wish I could take it back. It was supposed to be beautiful and deep and fun and bonding. But it kind of felt empty. It felt like he was having sex on me, not with me. I've never had that experience before. And that's the only way I can put it. And then while we were in bed and he was using the lube and we were gently get doing our thing, he suddenly turned into the devil. And his voice dropped several octaves. As I said, stop, you're hurting me, stop. He was thrusting into me, not lost in passion. He knew he was hurting me. He knew the situation with me. He knew it, ignored me. His eyes became lifeless. And he said, you can't tell me what to do. And finished. Then he fell asleep. I'm raw, bleeding, unbeknownst to me, right around the corner is a urinary tract infection. And I'm there in the darkened room, looking at the ceiling, feeling utterly alone. And I said, I've got to leave. I've got to leave. I've got to go. I'm afraid of him. He's a monster. All of the things he did sort of started coming to my mind. And I knew them when they happened, but I kind of would push them aside. And so many more that later, if I watch this video back, I'll say to myself, you forgot to mention that. You forgot to mention that. You forgot to mention that. In the morning, he woke up and said, that was the most satisfying sex I've ever had.
So I started planning to leave. On my computer. I contacted a couple of truth seekers, emailed them, told them things weren't going that well. One of them told me you'll know when it's time to leave. It was time. So I went online, purchased tickets. Funnily enough, when I arrived, I had several suitcases, not just the two I arrived for the initial trip, maybe like eight suitcases I came with. Because I told you I have a lot of clothes. I came with eight suitcases, give or take. And then on the ship was the rest of my wardrobe. I only brought the stuff that was like t-shirts and leggings and casual-ish stuff for the time before my possessions arrived, which still hadn't made it across the sea. Got the plane tickets. Tried to find the company that had transported my cats. Got that information. I knew I wanted to take all of my clothes back. I'm not going to leave it. So since he had taken my suitcases, very expensive ones, and given them away to relatives, family members, because, you know, just like the cell phone, he told me, you know, you won't need those. When we go on a trip, we can just pack together in one suitcase. And I stupidly went along with that, just like I went along with the giving away of the cell phone. So he had Amazon Prime. And so I ordered the cheapest suitcases, the ones that are like 20 bucks with his Amazon. Because I tried to get a bank account there, and unless I was a citizen or married or something, it was always, no, 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 you can't. I still had my bank account, but I couldn't get with my Amazon people to deliver stuff to England. I had to have it delivered to his address in England. So I used his Amazon and bought several suitcases. I think the total was maybe like 150 pounds. And remember, he had maybe 3,000 pounds of mine in his bank for the apartment that we could never get because everything had radiation poisoning. Back to the sexual situation that I mentioned earlier. When it happened and I was lying there, I didn't think the word rape. I just felt immense cruelty and saw him change into a different person. I thought, this is rape, maybe? But I'm his girlfriend. I willingly came to live in his house. We've had consensual sex many times. What am I going to do? Grab his car keys while he slept in this tiny house where he'd hear me? And get dressed in this tiny house where he'd hear me? I've never driven his car. It's a stick shift. I'm an American. I can drive a stick, kind of. I mean, I could probably drive one. I drove one when I was a teen. That's the last time. But the steering wheel's on the other side. And not only that, compared to Americans, they drive on the other side. So there's several complications in the way. Plus, if I left, where would I go? My cats who are like my children, since I don't have children, would be with him. Who am I going to call? Where am I going to drive to? I can't. It's not as easy as some would say, just call the police. Oh, what? So they'd take me to the hospital and uh, check for sperm and some cuts, and then he would just say, yeah, we had sex, and it got a little rough. And the doctor would be like, way to go, buddy. And then I'd get crazy amounts of abuse when I returned home. So I determined to leave. I didn't call the police. To me, leaving safe and getting my cats out of there safe was way more important. There's a thing called marital rape, which covers girlfriends too. And that's what he did. It's much harder to prove. But in the United States, I think most states have a law against it. I don't know about the UK. I wasn't thinking about laws. I was just thinking about getting the hell out.